Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. We are going to solve chapter 11 questions of Viragvan. First question is, this is the first part. As compared to engineering stress strain curve, the true stress strain curve is above and to the left, below and to the right, crosses the engineering curve parallel to the engineering curve. Okay, so let us see the engineering curve and the true stress strain curve. So this is normal engineering curve looks like. Now if you draw this true stress strain curve, then it goes like this. This is your true and this is your engineering. Okay. So which will be the correct option? It will be option A. Next. In a tensile test, the engineering stress corresponds to the maximum load is called. Right? So the engineering stress corresponding to the maximum load. See, this is the maximum load, and after this load, the necking has charged. So this load is basically called as UTS, ultimate tensile strength. Okay. Fine. In a tensile test, necking starts at. So similarly, you can refer this graph again. So here the necking starts. So it starts at UTS or ultimate tensile stress. Okay. Now. Super plastic materials have an index of a strain rate sensitivity M in the range of, right? You remember this, uh, the range is 0 0.4 to 0 0.9. See, your sigma, if it is dependent on your strain rate, some constant K. Okay, suppose this M value is equal to 0. So that means sigma is equal to K. So sigma is independent of strain rate. So that means if we increase the strain rate or decrease the strain rate, the tensile stress strain curve is going to be same. But as we increase this M value, so that means it, it shows some dependence. So accordingly, there will be plastic deformation. So now if M value will be greater like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, then it will be such that as we increase the stress, the more number of dislocation is also generating. So it is getting harder and harder, but it is not necking down because you know, because it is very sensitive to this strain rate, so that's a more number of dislocation is forming, and that is allowing it to hard, it, it to hard, and again plastic deformation it is going on. Okay, so that load is going to be taken at that moment of time. Okay, everyone. Fine. Next question. The critical reserve shear stress CRSS for a polycrystalline copper is. See, the question is tricky. Here it is asked for a polycrystalline copper. Polycrystalline means it contains many grids. Now it contains many grains. So one it contains many grains, so there will be this critical see your results your stress will not be a certain valid factor because crss is used for a single crystal material right this is used for a single crystal material and here it is a polycrystal so it is not defined it will be the correct one <coughs> okay let us proceed the resolved shear stress for plastic deformation to start in an iron crystal Iron crystal is V is equal to shear modulus. So this is some typical value. So you don't need to remember this one because it has been taken from this table. So this is the table. 
So you can see here your iron. Okay. Here it is given mu upon tau is equal to 47w. So tau is equal to mu by 47w. That is what it is asking. Okay. Next question. Crystal like diamond and silicon are brittle because then they contain no dislocation. They are non-crystalline. They contain no dislocation. Wrong. Because see diamond and silicon both are crystalline material. Right? So they will contain certain amount of dislocation. That is for sure. They are non-crystalline. This is also wrong statement. The stress to move dislocation is high in them. Yes. It is high. Right. It is very high. They contain very few dislocations. No. Okay, so this is your correct one, C. Question number 8. Copper is ductile because it is just similar question but in the opposite way. It is a perfect crystal. No, it cannot be said like it is a perfect one. It contains a very high density of dislocation. No, this is not a perfect region because once it contains high density of dislocation, so it will not be ductile, it will be hard. If it is a perfect crystal, so it is again going to be brittle because there is no dislocation, so that is not going to help for the uh, deformation. It has a glassy structure now. The stress to move a dislocation in it is low. Yes. Option T will be the correct one. Next. For copper, the yield stress that is sigma y and the brittle fracture stress sigma f are related as. This is for a copper. Generally, for all material, see sigma y, it is somewhere here. This is sigma y, and this is your UTS. Okay, and fracture stress is generally over here. Okay, so this fracture stress is over here so see what happens but in the case of copper basically since it is a very ductile material right so once it is a ductile material then what happens the fracture which happens is at a certain higher value as compared to the yield stress because so much of deformation will happen and this much of deformation will uh, allow more dislocation to generate okay so more dislocation to generate so more hardness will be there right? so that's why strain hardening the role of this strain hardening also becomes significant so that's why this sigma f value over here is your greater than sigma y okay now next question the length of the frank rate source operating after cold after work hardening to double the initial yield stress is approximately so this has to be double so tau is equal to gb by l now suppose this tau we need to double so we'll have to decrease this length by two so then it can be double so it will be tau 2 gb by r so it will be tau dash equal to tau 2 times of tau okay okay so this is the only first part and it contain very short question next we'll come off with second part so stay tuned and best of luck for your examination